on guys, it's Cynical and welcome back to a, another Kingdom Hearts 3 news and information video. Today for you guys we have some exciting stuff to talk about as Square Enix tonight out of nowhere have dropped a buttload worth of brand new junk for Kingdom Hearts 3. Brand new images that further also reveal to us some cool and exciting new stuff. Now we're only going to be talking about the more interesting stuff that Square Enix included in their drop tonight but if you guys want to check out the rest of the images I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. So the first image reveals to us that Stitch is returning once again for Kingdom Hearts 3. As you guys should know he was a summon in Kingdom Hearts 2 and once again he's filling in the summon role for Kingdom Hearts 3. I know some people might find this a little bit disappointing as they wanted a Stitch world in the game, uh, but once again, Stitch is returning as a summon. Now, the official description of the Stitch summon over on the Kingdom Hearts Twitter account reads, Sora's link attack with Stitch allows him to catch enemies in his lasers and strike them all down in one go. And this gameplay scene right here shows us the link in action. So from the official description of the link itself, it seems to be that Stitch sort of runs around the place and shoots out his lasers. I'm sure we will have a certain amount of control over exactly where he shoots and when he shoots. And when he does so, he creates these sort of laser strands in which I'm assuming from the description right here means that the enemies actually get stuck in these laser strands, almost like a stun effect. And then I'm guessing at the end of the summon, Stitch can activate a special attack which attacks all of the captured enemies within the lasers in one single blast. It sounds to me that he's a little bit more offensive this time around than being more of a sort of support based summon, which he kind of was in Kingdom Hearts 2, so yeah, I'm happy to see that he's a little bit more so involved in battle for Kingdom Hearts 3's version of him. Next up, we have our first ever little sneak peek at Disney Castle within Kingdom Hearts 3. Although with that being said, Disney Castle is still not known as to whether it is going to be playable and visitable within the game, but what we do know is it will appear in cutscenes. So this first image shows us obviously the library section of the castle with Chippendale standing on the table right now. The uh, next image shows us Chippendale once again, a nice close up look at their models. They're looking super, super nice in HD, all glorified and just high resolution. You can see the stitching and the threading. And then the next image shows us Chippendale once again, but with Sora using his gummy mobile to obviously communicate with him. So uh, similar to with what's happening with Enzo, with Sora going back and forward with him, with him being over in Rainy Garden, the same will obviously be going on with Chippendale, where we make frequent communication with the characters. Now this next image shows us a brand new new limit attack right here that we've never seen so far, but it seems very, very familiar to one that we've seen from Kingdom Hearts 2. I think what we're looking at right here is Kingdom Hearts 3's version of Donald's Comet attack, except this time around it looks like it's on absolute steroids, because opposed to sending out like fireworks and little, you know, pretty blasts and whatnot, uh, this time around we're standing in actual meteors, dude. Yeah, this duck is not playing for this game. He's getting serious, man. I'm liking this. So as we know, Duck Flare is going to be in Kingdom Hearts 3. We've already seen that in action, and for the people who have been able to experience the demo, that is one of the limit attacks you can use in the Olympus demo. So I guess because Duck Flare is back to a certain degree, even though it works very differently to the way Duck Flare works in Cage 2, uh, it looks to be that Comet is back. Whether or not it will be called Comet for Kingdom Hearts 3, who knows. This could also be like some alternate version of the Meteor spell that is found in Dream Drop Distance, or of course it could just be something entirely different. One way or another though, this is definitely a second Donald Limit attack. As we're seeing right here, this is in the Pirates of the Caribbean world, and then this next image right here is in the Kingdom of Corona. Next we see a brand new image of the Blizzard Blades, which is the first phase Keyblade transformation for the Frozen Keyblade in action, as we can see. We've actually seen a lot of images and screenshots for this Keyblade transformation, but what is cool about this image? is not so much what's going on right bang smack in the middle of the image, but more so what's going on to the right of the image. We see a brand new Heartless that we've never seen before. The Heartless is pretty unique looking. It looks like some sort of monkey or bear thing inside a pot with the pot having the Heartless sigil on it. Gotta say that so far the Heartless design for King of Hearts 3 is absolutely superb. There's a lot of different variety going on that caters to each of the different worlds. Now following on with the Frozen Keyblade transformation stuff, we actually have a new gameplay scene right here of Sora using the second phase Keyblade transformation for the Frozen Keyblade which is known as Blizzard Claws. Uh, it is part of the speed form where Sora is equipped with the green based 
form outfit. So similar to that of Blizzard Blades, Blizzard Claws will obviously be focused around that of speed with speed-based attacks and combos, fast hits, and a lot of damage in a quick amount of time. This reminds me a lot though of the Assault Claws, which is the first phase Keyblade transformation for the Monsters Inc. Keyblade. And then following on with new Frozen stuff, we have two new images right here of Marshmallow. Now, in case you guys don't know, Marshmallow is going to be the sort of party member for that of uh, the Frozen World in Kingdom Hearts 3, although I personally feel as if he will be quite situational, meaning that he will only come in as a party member in uh, specific sort of scenario moments throughout the world. Uh, we know that he is used in the boss fight of the world, and there's probably going to be a few other moments where he is used as well, but whether or not he is on call all the time, I don't think that's going to be a thing. Maybe it will be a thing, and if so, that's kind of awesome, but at the same time, I almost feel like it's going to be a little bit too overpowered. I mean, he's a massive snowman thing with fuck off claws, so I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how this works, but these two new images are pretty cool. And we also have the world icon for that of the Mysterious Tower, looking very clean. And speaking of the Mysterious Tower, we actually do have some new images for the place in itself. Uh, we have this brand new image of Sora, Donald, and Goofy, very nice, but we can clearly see Sora holding a suitcase, which looks to be very similar to the suitcases that was given to both Riku and Mickey at the end of 0.2 Birth by Sleep. Yensid explains that within those suitcases are brand new garments made by the fairies, so we can only assume that what is inside that suitcase that Sora is holding onto is his Kingdom Hearts 3 outfit. This next image shows us Sora, Donald, Goofy, Mickey, Riku standing in front of Yen Sid's table, obviously having some kind of conversation with Yen Sid, as another image shows us the same scene, I'm assuming, just from behind the characters. Now what I want to know is, whenabouts is this happening? Because in the previous screenshot we can see that Sora is within his Kingdom Hearts 2 outfit. We also know that Sora is within his Kingdom Hearts 2 outfit for a certain portion of the Olympus world, where at the end of 0.2 Birth by Sleep, that's exactly where Sora, Donald, and Goofy are heading towards the Olympus Coliseum. So I guess we go to both Olympus as well as Twilight Town, as Twilight Town has also been described as being the tutorial segment of Kingdom Hearts 3, then return to Yen Sid's tower, receive our new outfit, and I gather put it on there while we're at Yen Sid's tower. And this is where this conversation then takes place to debrief Sora, Donald, and Goofy on exactly what they'll be doing from here onwards. Although it is a little bit confusing as to exactly why King Mickey as well as Riku are in this conversation. At the end of 0.2 we see that they come back to Yen Sid's tower, receive their new outfits, and they're sent off to go into the realm of darkness in order to recover Aqua, as well as also finding the key to return hearts. I don't think they've necessarily done all of that in that amount of time. I mean I don't know how long's passed since the end of 0.2 where Sora's flying off to Olympus and then to the point where he's returned from Olympus and potentially Twilight Town. I mean I gather it's only like a week or something. Who knows, it'll all make sense once we finally get the game. And the last image right here is a really nice one of good old HD wrinkles, and quite literally, good old HD wrinkles, like my god, I mean, out of all of the different scenes and images we've, we've seen so far for good old Mr. Grey right here, this has got to be the most defining one in the sense of the high definition wrinkles this man has on his six stone. But it's not just the wrinkles, oh no! We have HD veins, boys. Like, look at these disgusting HD veins. Yeah, I thought I'd just throw this one in here for the sheer reason of bringing up these HD veins. And to finish up, we have some brand new character renders as well. One right here of Master Xehanort looking really spicy. I don't know what this pose is, but nice dude. Brand new character renders of both Laxine and Malusha. We also have new ones for both Lee as well as Yen Sid looking really nice. And a real clean one right here of Jiminy Cricket. How about dudes, that is going to wrap up today's video. That is all of the more more interesting images and renders that uh, Square Enix randomly out of the blue today dropped. Be sure to leave your thoughts and opinions towards all of this in the comment section down below. I do believe that out of this new stuff that we have seen, we're probably going to see some of this stuff in motion uh, come the time of receiving the final 2018 trailer on December 18th. Like I said, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below to the rest of the images if you guys want to check them out. However, with all that being said, guys, I'm Cynical. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day, and until next time, guys, I'll catch you Later. Peace. Hit him on the page, you'll be coming through stain. Go dead my mouth when you suckers be bluffing. Look, crank, gaming up the bitch though. Catch me in the back, playing Super Nintendo.